okay, I think I'm going to go with so fearlessly questioning the dirty work. And when I think of that topic, you know, my job is um, I'm a manager for authors and speakers. So if you're an author or a speaker and you want to concentrate on writing or speaking, you would hire someone like me to handle the rest of your business, which often could be, I guess, considered the dirty work. Um, but, you know, the dirty work, it sounds like a negative connotation, and I think when we look at that that way, we lose a lot of value in the kind of um, what that work brings to the table. When I first started working, I actually went to college on a Fulbright scholarship for about three semesters, and I dropped out, much to the demise of my family. But I just did not want to go to school. I was ready to go to work. And so I got a job as a receptionist, actually, to start, and from there, um, just kind of worked my way up the ladder in this um, executive assistant type of role. So eventually, I worked at a radio station in St. Louis, and I was the executive assistant to the head honcho of the whole radio group. i got to tell you what, this was a job that was not glamorous. It didn't have a fancy title. It didn't have a fancy office. But the truth was, the dirty work that was this job, it was one of the most um, fun and rewarding jobs I've ever done. It also was a job that carried a lot of power with it. It didn't seem like it was a powerful job, but basically everything that the boss had to do, she would give me about half of it, because the half that I did was the half anyone could do, and the half that she did was what only she could do, that no one else could fill in for her. So with that responsibility came a lot of things that you wouldn't have thought would go with the title. It came you know, running, um, being on boards for nonprofits, going to black tie events, being in charge of all the tickets and where everybody went to what sporting events and those kind of things. So some really fun, more glamorous things. But it's a position that is not seen as a very high-level position. And I think that a lot of times what we call the dirty work really should be called the behind-the-scenes work. Because what happens behind the scenes is ultimately the reason that the person on the stage gets to do what they do. Um, if you're a speaker and you go to an event, you can't, um, that event's not going to be successful if someone hasn't done the dirty work ahead of time of making sure that you have a way to get there, that someone's going to pay you when you get there, that there'll be a microphone or an audience for that matter for you. So without the dirty work getting done, all the glory and um, the benefit that comes from the stage wouldn't be nearly as glorious or beneficial. Um, if you are a writer, um, you only you can write your book. That comes from your heart. I think God put that message in you, and that is for you to share with the world. But there's a lot more to writing a book than actually just writing it. I mean, somebody has to buy it. And the dirty work of book launches, which is one of my focuses, is you know creating a launch team for your book and making sure that your sales team's working hard on it. Are there websites that promote it? Do you have a launch plan in place for when your book finally comes out? Is there a publicist working on that? That's all the dirty work that goes along with making sure books actually get sold. So. I kind of live in the dirty work every day, and I like it. Um, it allows me to work with a lot of different people on a lot of different projects, and um, just be able to say I had a little part in something very successful happening. So it's a place I like to live. I'm pretty comfortable there.